In this video, we're gonna learn how to add an unstyled Radix dialog to this interface, style it with Tailwind, and see all of the cool features it gives us. So we're looking at this simple list of cards here, and it comes from this React component. Right now, it's just a static list of data. We map over and render a card for each user, and uh, there's no interactivity yet. And what we wanna do is render a modal in the middle of the screen whenever we click an edit button that shows a form with the data for the selected user. So the first thing we want to do is come here and import the dialog. And we use a namespace import to get all of the different pieces of Radix's dialog on this single variable we can use. Now, the first step to using a dialog is to find where we're actually going to be triggering it from. And that's this button right here, which in our loop is this element here. And first we want to wrap this in a dialog.root. And this will control all the dialog behavior uh, for the components inside. Now a dialog has two major pieces. The first is a trigger, which we can actually just replace our button with. And the second is dialog.content. And this is where the contents of our dialog goes. So let's see if this works. We'll save this. And check this out. <laughs> I can click the button and we get a dialog or something that is supposed to be a dialog rendering right near each button. Now, Radix components are completely unstyled, but Radix does include some components that will help us get this looking a bit more like a modal. And the first one we can use is dialog.portal. So uh, let's go ahead and wrap our content in a portal and come back and try this out. Now we can't see anything yet, but if I scroll down, we're actually gonna see it way down here. And this is because dialog.portal just renders a React portal. And if you've used React portals before, you'll know if we pop open the inspector, we'll see uh, our new dialog content. Let's see if this works, is being rendered way down here, uh, not even inside uh, the rest of our application. And this is a really handy feature of portals that makes it easy to style content like dialogs that sit on top of other elements of the UI. So we can come here and add a class name of fixed to our content to make it position fixed. And for now, let's put it at the top with top zero. And there we go, we see our content way up there at the top. Now let's make this actually look like a modal with background white, text gray 900. We'll add a bit of padding and a shadow. And we'll add a bit of rounding with rounded MD. And I'll wrap the text so we can stay over here. Okay, starting to look better. Let's position this in the center. So we can set the top to 50% uh, with top one half and the left to 50%. And that actually puts the top left part of our modal right in the center of the screen. And to account for the width and height, we can actually just translate it over uh, by half of each of those values to get the whole box centered. So let's come here and add a negative translate in the X direction of one half and we'll see that nudges it over and we'll add negative translate y of one half to nudge it up and now our dialog is perfectly centered in our app but it's a little hard to see on the background here usually dialogues have an overlay uh, that dims the rest of the interface well fortunately here uh, radix has our back as well we can render a dialog dot overlay component right here give it a class name of fixed We'll get it to cover the entire area with inset zero, and then we'll give it a background of black. And there we go, it's hiding everything. A Little bit dark, so let's add 50% opacity, and that looks much nicer. So check out in just about 10 lines of code what we've been able to pull off here. I can click on this, hit escape. I can click on this and click anywhere outside the element to close it, but if we click here, uh, it still works. If I actually hit tab, Radix is making sure we don't tab to other elements behind the overlay. It's made everything inert. And uh, it has even prevented us from scrolling the body when the dialog is open. And if we scroll down here, open the dialog, can't scroll. And if I dismiss it, we don't get any uh, change in the scroll position of the overall application. I'm sure those are all things that you've run into before when trying to implement dialogs on your own. Radix takes care of all of it all while letting us just add React components and Tailwind classes right here in the component we're already working with. Okay, so let's actually work on filling out the content of this modal. And this is going to be an edit contact modal 
it's going to render a form uh, that we can use to edit this data. So let's wrap this in an H2. I'll give this a class name of text Excel, make the font a little bit bigger. Let's also make our dialog width full and give it a max width of size MD so that it always stays the same size regardless of the content. Now this title is looking good, but dialogues usually have a little close button over here as another way to dismiss them. So let's add a button and we'll use the cross one icon from Radix icons. And we can see it right there. All right, let's go ahead and wrap these in a flex parent with justify between and item center. And we'll make our button a little bit softer with text gray 400. And let's give it a little bit of a hover treatment, hover text gray 500. Nice. Next, we wanna add the actual form fields below our title. And I actually have a user fields component down here. It takes in a user and it just renders some labels and inputs for each property on the user. Nothing but some JSX and Tailwind classes in here. So we can come up and right below kind of our header div, let's render user fields and we'll pass in the user. Let's wrap this in a bit of margin. And uh, this is starting to look pretty good. So uh, this is another thing I love about working with this Radix dialog. Remember, we're already mapping over our users, which are coming from this JSON file here. And uh, each one of these dialogs are being written. You know, we're writing the code right alongside the rest of the markup in the loop, which means we have access to things like this local user variable that we can use to pass directly uh, into the contents of our dialogue, even though the dialogue is being rendered in a portal elsewhere. And uh, I, that just makes for such a nice developer experience. We don't have to worry about separating these two things conceptually. It's just as if we were rendering a form in line in our loop, and that makes it really nice. We can see here, uh, we can click on Noah, and we're gonna get all of Noah's data in our fields. Okay, finally, let's add a little footer here, and we're gonna add a save button. And let's make this background green 500. We'll give it text white, maybe some padding of four in the X direction, two in the Y direction. We'll make the text small and font medium. And let's go ahead and right align this text right and add a little bit of margin. And we'll make this rounded as well. And we'll make the background green 600 on hover. So hover background green 600, something like that. Let's copy this and make a cancel button. We'll add a little bit of space in between these, maybe six units of space. And uh, let's remove the background here and the text color. We'll soften the color up with text gray 500. And when we hover, we'll make text gray 600. Something like that. Okay, our new elements are looking pretty good and our form is wired up. Uh, but if we click our close button, it's actually not doing anything. Well, check this out. I'm gonna come here to our button that wraps the cross icon and I'm going to replace this with dialog.close. Save that, click it, boom. Just like that, we wired up a new piece of our interface um, to the internal state that Radix is managing for us behind the scenes within the dialog component. Let's do the same thing for our cancel button down here. I'll change this to dialog.close, save that, and uh, all of this is wired up great. We can still hit escape to dismiss the dialog. I can tab through our new fields and buttons, and Radix is cycling the tab within the dialog, again, not allowing us to tab anything in the interface behind, and um, I can dismiss this. If we scroll, we don't lose our scroll position. All of that functionality is working great. Now there's one more component we can use. Uh, if we look at where we're rendering our edit contact title here, we can replace this H2 with a dialog.title. And uh, if we save this, we're not gonna see any uh, obvious behavior change right away. But if I open the inspect tab and we find this element, we're gonna see that Radix renders an H2, it gives it an ID, and if we find the root dialog here, we're actually gonna see all sorts of cool stuff that Radix has added in the form of ARIA attributes 
And in particular, we see this new one, ARIA labeled by, this is pointing to the auto-generated ID uh, that it has put on our dialog.title uh, component. So Radix has gone ahead and added all of the accessibility attributes, things like ARIA described by and ARIA labeled by uh, to our custom dialog that we've built from scratch to match the look and feel of our app. And uh, this way we know it's gonna work on all devices and browsers and in fact, in the future, if a browser were to take advantage of any sort of the standard markup behind a dialog, we know our custom dialog is gonna be able to take advantage of those features. So everything is looking great. Our dialog is rendering correctly, it's styled correctly, and all of these buttons work with the exception of the save button. And in the next video, we're gonna wire up the save button to persist the changes in the form and then learn how to programmatically dismiss our dialog.